Hello, and welcome to the Dark Cloud Digital Compendium. My name's Tim Castle, and I'll be your guide. It's time that we start discussing the cut content that's found in the first Dark Cloud game. As we established, the first Dark Cloud's production was mired by the looming threat of deadlines by Sony, as well as the initial clash of vision for the title. As Sony wanted more of a traditional RPG that showcases the PS2's power, and Level 5 wanted a game that focused on creation. These sentiments are apparent when one views the cut content that's left over on the game's disc and various store demos. For this video, I'll be using the cutting room floor as our primary resource. This website is an excellent resource for researching video game cut content and one that I contribute to. Many of these files can be accessed by using two tools, those being White Cloud and Light Cloud. The link to these two tools can be found in the video's description. On Dark Cloud's disc, there is a folder that's labeled as old on the retail version. There, you can find a handful of unused content that can be viewed. Among these files are alternate character names which describe each character and their interests. They are as follows. Toran a young boy who has a unique ability to extract the fragments of the world. Perhaps this was the initial name for Atla, Toro. Training to be a hunter, Toro lives in the village of Mataragi. Ruby, a sorceress imprisoned inside of a lamp. Her magic is very powerful. This line of text may reference how Ruby was initially supposed to play, as if the player wanted to use Ruby, they had to go into their menu and use the lamp to summon Ruby. Angara, a strong warrior of the desert people, he has the power to control the wind. However, the two most interesting are Xiao, a young girl magically transformed from a cat to a human being. She has the power to change back into a cat. Now perhaps this was her initial gameplay feature instead of jumping over traps. And side, a mysterious warrior with a magic sword. He has an extreme appreciation for the god of magic. Side later became known as Seda. Interestingly, Side's character bio talks about a god of magic, which was never referenced in the game, but may be an early name for the Dark Genie, but that's my speculation. In addition, during the Sony PlayStation Festival in 2000, Level 5 released a trailer to the public attending the venue and this trailer showed off Dark Cloud's playable characters. It also showed a brief glimpse of Seda with a rough walk cycle and Seda in the middle of casting a spell. The absence of Osman in this trailer would show that Seda was unfortunately a late cut into the development cycle. I personally theorize that the team scrapped Seda due to an approaching deadline and Osman being easier to animate due to the lack of walk cycle and low weapon variety. So. These names are likely results of a then incomplete localization, rather than being something that was once set in stone. This leads into the unused character portraits that can be found in the game's files, where we can see that along with Ruby's beta portrait, Seda also had one, hinting that he would have been playable. His positioning is the same as Osmond, which makes us believe that he was replaced, poor Seda, between losing his kingdom and his girl, the guy just can't catch a break. Another beta element is an early Giorama menu that was left over on the game disc. This differs from the earliest Giorama menu that was shown off at Tokyo Game Show 1999, and this one looks more simplistic in comparison. This could be from the phase of development, when level 5 had to scale back some of the Giorama's depth. Speaking of scaling back Giorama, there is an unused cactus that's left over in Norin Village's tile set, which implies that you were once able to place cactuses. As an aside, this could relate to our source in the first interview that told us that the initial design for the game was more of a South American worldview. It's always nice seeing things come full circle. On the topic of unused items, there are also several unused items that are left over in the game's files. Some of these items can even be glitched back into gameplay, such as a Medusa powder. The descriptions for these items were found on the game's files, and they are as follows. Medusa powder. Petrifies enemy for a while. Hardening powder. 
can harden a bottomless marsh. Perhaps this was a key item to circumvent the various pits that you find in the dungeon. Powder of Teleportation lets you teleport to a different location on the same floor. An early design for the fishing rod. A worm fishing rod as well as a prickly fishing rod. I suppose this would function as a fishing rod that doesn't need baits. Pedometer counts every step. Save book allows you to save when moving to another floor. Early pedometer, early save book. Magical lamp, a lamp for summoning Ruby the genie. Unknown, shell ring, a memento of Rando and the Queen. Interestingly, this shell ring can be seen referenced in the Dark Cloud North American Strategy Guide as a key item. Early designs for the Thunder, Ice Crystal, Wind Crystal, and Fire Crystal. Dran's Horn lets you ride on Dran to another map. Perhaps this was utilized before level 5 thought of using the world map as a way to traverse location. Moon Flute, a flute that can call the moon boat. An early design for the gourd. Unused spirit water. Water from the spring of the spirit fully quenches your thirst. Healing water. Water from Miraculous Peaks recovers your body. Siren's Tear fully recovers your body. Early design for Queen's Hook, Gate Key. Early design for King's Slave, Gate Key. Unused Gold Statue, Gate Key. Unused Flame Key, Gate Key. An unused Flame Dungeon Key. Now this could show that there was initially a Flame Dungeon that was planned for Dark Cloud when it was in development. And if one were to look above Norun Village in early 3D renders, you could see that there was an area that was very mountainous. Perhaps this area would have been called Miraculous Peaks, as there is text in the item descriptions that refers to such area. This early 3D render of Norun Village has mountains positioned all around it. There is also an unused red area on the world map that can be seen during gameplay. This area is not used in the final game and ends up being covered by the moon. There are also unused 3D models of volcanoes in the final game, along with several flame dungeon key items that we discussed prior. Using the evidence that we have shows that a flame dungeon and a Jirama section with the name Miraculous Peaks, as seen in the unused water bottle description, was in development somewhere down the line. Perhaps it was cut due to time restraints. Early design for flapping fish. Back floor item and shipwreck. Early design for rotting flapping fish. Yuck, it's rotten. Early design for sun and moon temple dungeon key. Unused world map. Used to teleport to new areas. Early design for water. Unknown. One of these unused icons is a series of equipable pachinko balls for Xiao. Text in the game's data tells us that this bag was for a pachinko attachment. The only equipable pachinko in the game's files are referred to as nuts in the text. Perhaps this was a localization in the making. There is a petite nut, which the text tells us is a bullet for the slingshot with very little power. There are also a myriad of unused weapon icons in the retail version of the game. These stem from different phases of development as some look more crude than the others. Take a look many of which were unfinished and replaced with a box-like texture. The standouts are early designs for weapons that made it into the final game, such as a Chronicle and Chronicle 2 sword, as well as what looks like a very early upgradable dagger. However, that is speculation on my part due to how these weapons are lined up together and look very similar in comparison. Among the unused text in the final game's files shows two stats that weren't in the final release. Those were luck and growth, as growth plus one, plus two, and plus three are in the game's files, and are stated that they would have made the player gain more experience in battle, and luck would have increased the player's luck stat. There were also some changes to the battle system. As in this photo dating from the European Computer Trade Show of September 2000, you could see the weapon was initially placed along the top HUD, which is typically reserved for equipable items, and would switch from the active weapon that's equipped to an icon of a shield. Perhaps this was a gameplay mechanic for attacking and blocking. Furthermore, there is also a gold sword icon which would allow the player to initiate a duel with any monster they please. In the retail version, 
duels were reserved as a mini-boss scenario. There are several unused sound effects found on the game's data. As of this video, only two of those sound effects were found on the game disc. The others have been ripped from other sources. The two were found by frequent compendium contributor Kai. Take a listen. <laughs> The first sound effect appears to be a spinning dagger followed by a jingle. Perhaps this was meant as an early jingle for the title screen. The second is Xiao yelling Yosh, which means alright. There are several more unused sound effects that can be found on the Dark Cloud movie disc. These range from a beta noise for closing menus as well as obtaining an item. Check it out. The movie disc was preserved by Italian Dark Cloud form user Console Dev and can be found on the Dark Cloud Digital Compendium in video form. Recently, when I viewed Dark Cloud in a text editor, I noticed that there are several test rooms that were left in the game. Without knowing how to access them, I contacted video game super whiz and cutting room floor contributor Punk7890, who created action replay codes to make these accessible in almost every version of the game. Preservation of these debug menus is key to understanding a game's creation and development. All the codes required to access these menus are available on the cutting room floor if you wanted to try them for yourself. The first of these debug menus is a runtime debug menu which enables the user to view events, jump to any map, enter dungeons, change the language of the game, or simply start the game normally. The option interior doesn't work on international releases as it's trying to load a map with an ID that is not on the disc anymore. This is only present in the Japanese release. Entering this option will send you to an unused map which you can exit. When forcefully removing the debug menu, you can exit it, but there's nothing there aside from a black void. However, if you go into the dungeon header, the game reveals the names of the dungeon, some of which differ from the final game and are quite interesting in their own right. There is the Cave of the Sacred Beasts, Forest of the Own, which I suppose is a typo, Sunken Ship, which became Shipwreck, Shrine of the Sun and Moon, Moon Ocean, Dark Heaven Castle, as well as Daemon Shaft. Interestingly, the way that Daemon is spelt, Daemon, is not the same as Demon, as Daemon would be something in between humanity and the gods. I think this is a really cool name because it represents the looming spire that is a demon shaft. Very intimidating. There is also a dungeon debug menu. When pressing L3 in the dungeon, the debug menu will appear and can give you the ability to turn off debug information, turn off collision, fully open the minimap, and even listen to the game's music and sound effects. Some of these musical tracks actually differ from their final variants, as it seems that they're missing a few sound channels. In addition, there's also an item debug menu, which is prone to crashing, but allows you to view every item that is in the game's code, including unused items, which you would not be able to get. You could rotate these items and their 3D models with the right analog stick, but it always crashes when I try this. However, my favorite debug feature is the debug camera, which can help us get a better understanding of the game's environments and what lies beyond the boundaries. This concludes all the information that is currently known of the cut content. However, there are some interviews that took place in E3 2000 where Level 5 detailed why features such as online gameplay, enhanced weather, and among other promises that were made were not going to be fulfilled in the final game. Perhaps this will be a topic of another video if you all are interested. Till then, 
Thank you for visiting the Dark Cloud Digital Compendium. I hope you have a great day. Take care.